Whether they install six new servers every day or one new server every six months, administrators are looking for ways to make new server setup consistent and easily repeatable. Let's take a closer look at how XClarity Administrator cuts down on the number of steps required to configure new server hardware. We're going to start here by taking a look at the graphical view of our chassis. Here we can see a new server that was inserted into the chassis this morning. Since then, XClarity has automatically discovered and inventoried the device. Now in step one, we're going to configure the base hardware. So from the provisioning menu, I'm going to select Patterns. This system is going to eventually join my Ops VMware cluster. So I'm going to select my standard Ops cluster node pattern and click the Deploy button. So I'll scroll down here a little to find the new server. We can see here that it's indicating it's being ready, so I'll select it. I'll click the Deploy button, and then simply confirm again. Now, this pattern could have several elements to it, like setting the server name, configuring local drives, local I.O. adapters, BIOS settings, stuff like that. Whatever my standard is, the system will get configured just like all my other servers in my ops cluster. We're going to go back to the chassis view so we can monitor the progress of the pattern deployment. And we can see that it's now activating the profile. A while later, the pattern has now been activated and the system re-inventoried. Notice that the pattern changed the name of the system to be consistent with my standards. Now we're ready for step two, where we want to make sure that the firmware is at the right level. For this step, we go back to the provisioning menu to apply and activate firmware. We can filter down this list to just show my ops servers, and I can quickly identify the new server here. I'm going to assign a standard policy just like my other servers. And it performs an automated health check, which tells me now that this server is not compliant and needs to be updated. So I select the server and I click the button to perform updates. Now this server isn't running any workloads yet, so I'm going to choose immediate activation and click the Perform Update button and Confirm. Now we can see the status here as the update process kicks off and begins updating the firmware on my system. A while later, the updates are now complete. The system has been automatically re-inventoried and it shows now that it's compliant. So the final step is to deploy VMware. So I again go to the provisioning tab. This time I select deploy operating system. And just like before, I use the filter to narrow down the list of systems. Select my server. I'm going to choose ESX from my operating system choices. And I want to tweak the network settings a bit so I can enter my own host name. Now just go back and now that I've selected the system, click the deploy images button. It's going to confirm that I'm now going to overwrite the system. And next clarity begins to push this new operating system down to the server. A while later, the install is done. We can see via remote control that the VMware is installed and booted. So I'm ready to shift over to my vCenter screen and join the server into my cluster. And that's all there is. As you can see, XClarity Administrator really simplifies my hardware setup, helping me go from bare metal hardware to joining my VMware cluster in just three easy steps.